It's very easy these days to take for granted how easy it is to find information that you want. Speeds are quick, search engines are everywhere, but it wasn't always so easy and if you keep watching this video we'll show you how it used to be. Right, the two main types of bulletin board systems, or BBSs, in the old days used to be like text-based, using uh, some occasional colour, or kind of like blocky-based, uh, with lots of colour. And in the UK, this was, until, the, until it faded out in favour of the more uh, slimmed-down versions, it was the predominant bulletin board system. And it was also used as part of the main uh, TV companies who used to carry the signal underneath the main TV signal, so for, but for specially adapted TVs, you could receive not quite as interactive as a bulletin board, but it still carried information which you could view on your TV, like weather and news, etc. And that was for people who were a little bit posher than we were when I was growing up. Well, here is an interesting piece of software, an interesting website, actually, by Glass TTY, and they go to keep the spirit of view data alive. And if you click on this bit here, it will tell you all about the Telstar project, information, everything you need to know about it. And very interesting it is too. And for those who were around at the time, it's a little bit of a nostalgia trip. But for those who are new to it, it might open your eyes and think how things used to be. So what we need to do, let's just go back, we need to go down to the Telstar view data client. And click on that. Welcome to Telstar. And there are two, no, three main types. There's uh, Linux, Mac, and Windows. And we're going to use Wine, 64-bit Wine uh, in this case. And it says all versions of the Telstar client are available here. So if we click on this, it will download a zip file, which contains all the different versions available. And there's a Windows one there. And how to change some parameters. But we'll have a look at that later. So if we click on that, and is it downloaded? Yep, there it is. You need to go to where you downloaded it, and we will unzip that here. I did try compiling the Linux version, but it didn't work for me. I always found the Wine one is actually quite reliable. So once we've unzipped it, we go in and find and some example connection files, which may be useful for you if you want to have a look to see how it, uh, the internals work. For now, we'll go to the Windows 64-bit one. And it's another zip file, of course it would be. I'll extract that here. And it leaves a nice little executable. So we're going to open that with Wine. And remember, this is the 64-bit, and on my system here, it runs 64-bit, uh, whereas the 32-bit 30 doesn't, which is uh, strange. And there it is. And when you're logging into the Telstar View Data BBS, or it gives you a more CFAX kind of feel. So what you need to do is that you press Enter, and it gives you a list. And it's kind of, um, to me, it's, it, it really is a, a, a memory jog. Because I remember accessing BBSs like this. I used to run one like this. Uh, it used to be called Network 23, which uh, <laughs> no one ever went on it. it. used to run on the Sinclair QL. It was, it was really good. Most people use the BBC Micro. I use a Sinclair QL. And here's a little, uh, it's kind of a recreation of Micronet 800. And if you ever used that, it was like a, a bulletin board system run by BT, which is the, the main... Uh, telco in the UK. And it's Micronet N, so it's telling you it's not a real Micronet, but it's a, it's a fearful reproduction. There's still some work to be done, but it's it's not bad. So, you know, you access it by every pressing, you know, your numbers, one, two, three, and zero to go back usually, and enter to carry on. Uh, you can put star, page number, and then uh, finish off by hash. Yeah, it's, it's quite, it's entertaining. It's not, it's not, you're not going to get, <laughs> speed-wise, it's not fantastic. But if you want the full experience of how it used to be that we used to, uh, oh, Presto, I remember Presto. Uh, how it used to be before, you know, we all got super fast and uh, all professional. This is how it used to be. 
Really good. So it's not... Um, there are some sections which aren't finished, but, I mean, you know, you've got to give time to uh, put the information up. And one thing I used to enjoy about uh, View Data BBS is that you could get online games, which was uh, kind of interesting. If you want to change any of the settings... Uh, at the top there it tells you you can change the TCP connection so if you want to uh, log on to a different one or use a different standard you can access your bulletin board using a serial connection if you've still got a modem, a dial up modem some people still have you can load up different uh, connection configurations and I'll show you that in a minute in this case, we're going to look at CCL4. So it takes us away from his Micronet uh, thingy, and here's CCL4. If you've ever seen CCL4, it's um, a very long-running ViewData BBS. I don't know if it's the same people, but I remember logging onto this one years gone by. Of course, everything won't be working now, so I'll just log in as guest. It's going to leave a message to the SISOP or the SISOP. It says, a cool BBS indeed. That's the title of your message. And for this old, old school uh, editor, let's have a look. Hello from a FreeBSD. I wonder if they know what FreeBSD is. User. It's great. I'm actually typing quicker than it is, but there's a certain lag to see view data again. Okay. Thank you for your hard work. I remember doing word processes like this on the BBC Micro at school. And how do we send? Uh, save is S, okay. So yes, nine to register, zero to re-log on, and one to leave a message. But yeah, this was just a quick test, a quick uh, look at how things used to be, especially in Britain, with view data. Just thought it might be interesting. I, I discovered this little piece of software, and I thought, oh, cool, I want to share it. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.